Oh, no way. Then there's no. I'm looking at you, Jim. I'm gonna hear the name and I'm gonna get PTSD. But the cream runs to the top for oh, you. Yeah. This week, uh, I wanted to talk about something I've been seeing online quite a bit lately that I'm seeing a little too much for my liking. And it's Ranger fans going around and creating a narrative about how Braden Point should have been traded to the Rangers in the Ryan McDonough deal. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand trade values, how they work. Uh, I also think a lot of people don't understand how playoff contenders don't take off of their roster to make their rosters better because that's partially taking steps backwards. You don't do that. Braden Point and Mikhail Sergachev were never available in those talks. They never were. Anybody who thought that they were, you were trying to live out a pipe. Because it wasn't happening. It just wasn't. Um, I've heard somebody say that Ty Johnson was available. Anthony and I were talking to a lot of people around that time. Obviously with Off the Post. But, yeah. We never heard Tyler Johnson take title. And why would Tampa Bay take what was, uh, I would say, a middle six center at the time. And deal, or a top six center even. Or maybe, yeah, you could say a middle six center. But... Why would they deal off of their roster? Anthony, you even mentioned that before with you know the whole Eichel talks. The idea is to add to your center depth. Tampa Bay was not dealing what was a borderline number one center at the time. Good thing you didn't get him because of his salary now. Well, I mean, yeah, it just... I get it. The Rangers didn't get enough of that deal. And I, I, I've said that several times before. I know I've said it to both you guys. I've said it to many people before. They didn't get enough, uh, especially with Anning and Ryan McDonough. Vlad Domestikov, we knew, was never going to do those numbers from Tampa without Steven Stamkos and Nikita Kucherov. It was never going to happen. But I mean, if you want to bash them for not getting Anthony Sorelli, fine. Sorelli wasn't an integral part of the team at that time. He was just trying to break in. That was really, I believe that was his rookie year. Um, but... You can't expect to get a top six center or a top four defenseman from a team that's trying to get a cup for a guy that has one year left on his deal after that season. One year. One year. And he's up there in age. He was 28 years old at the time. So you, you can't, can't expect that for a guy like Ryan McDonough. What they should have done, like I said, he had one year left on his deal after the season. So... Don't trade him to Tampa. Don't trade him. Say, okay, we're done. You're not getting anything for him. Tampa's prospect pool wasn't great. They were high on the wrong prospects. Looking at you, Brett Howden and Lieber Hayek, for the wrong reason. Lieber Hayek had a great World Juniors one year. They were blinded by that. Again, the World Juniors is a seven-game tournament in which you know, you're playing with the best of the best of your, your, your country for that. You know, age group, and sometimes it's a it's a good way to uh, you know judge performances, but sometimes it's also a bad way. Look at what happened with uh, a certain Eric Johnson in 2006. He ended up shooting up the ranking, and what did he become at the NHL level? He wasn't the second Chris Pronger like some thought he was going to be. Uh, but you, you can't you can't look at that as a barometer of a be all end all type you know deal to determine skill, potential, value, so on. I would say, if anything, they should have held on to him and waited for the offseason, traded him probably at the draft, where more teams would have been involved because more teams would have been looking to add and make ads at that point because they needed guys. And you know what? Ryan McDonough would have, what, 20 more games left on his deal as opposed to, oh, yeah, well, uh, Brent Howden, you know, uh, he's the uh, best player in the league because he uh, he comes every night and he uh, plays with pace and you know, his intentions are always good. You know, we talk about uh, intentions for 60 is probably my favorite stat in the league, boys. So, yeah, Brent Howden's going to lead us to the Stanley Cup next year. Brent, you can come play for me anywhere. And, uh, yeah, but y you can't – you should have held on to him. should have held on to him, waited for the offseason, four teams would have been available – you could have gotten more for him. And you know what? You could have traded him to a team with a better prospect pool. 
not ones with middling prospects like Howden and Hayek. I mean, T Taylor Radish was one of Tampa Bay's best prospects. Where is Taylor Radish? Where is Boris Kachuk? I mean, again, like I said, you want to bash him for not getting Sorelli? I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Gordon didn't get enough in that deal, especially to add JT Miller to that deal. You could have traded JT Miller separately in the offseason. And you know what? JT Miller himself said that he would have never gotten to that next level in New York because he wasn't serious enough. And the two trades, and the second one in Vancouver, was what made him wake up and realize that he had to raise his game and be more serious in the off seasons and be more serious about training himself to get to that next level. So, um, yeah, Vinny, Vinny Latiri, I think, yeah, Lou Nanny was, um, I think, uh, was the guy, yes. So, um, yeah, I, think uh, I, I, I don't understand why this narrative has all of a sudden just come around and it started popping up again, but I, I've seen, I would say, like four or five people mention it on Twitter. And I'm just sitting there, like, do you guys have any idea of how these things actually work? So. I think I think he panicked a little bit, because I, I remember that trade didn't come in until after 3 o'clock. It was after the 3 o'clock deadline, yep. and after 3, it was reported, oh, McDonald's... We were doing our show when that was on. It's, I, I, so... I, I'm telling you, I, for whatever, it seems, it's my opinion, I think he just, he panicked and he wanted to, he had it in his head that he wanted to get rid of him, and he took, he waited too long, and that was probably the last offer he had on the table, and he took it. So, but yeah, they, they, they didn't get enough. He, he dropped the ball there, and, oh, I mean, I think started. you're... I think you're 100% right about not getting Braden Point in that deal, and not getting Sergachev is inexcusable. Uh, well, Sergeyev at that point wasn't available. I, yeah, yeah, but I would have held out though. You got Sergeyev, not, no, you, you, not don't, you don't take from your roster. Nobody's doing that in the middle of a playoff run. Right, but in this case, Sergeyev was a number two uh, power play unit quarterback. And by the way, it had worked out fine for the Rangers. They ended up getting out of Fox later, but. but they stole. Um, they stole Sergachev from Montreal for Bruin, so they weren't. They weren't going to trade him again. He was not. No. He was never going right. to. He, he no. was never going to be available. In that That's trade. a great point by Anthony. They weren't going to do that. That's why I was talking about when you brought up uh, Pierre Luc Dubois before earlier on before we got on. That's why I said they're not going to move Pierre Luc Dubois, especially after trading Patrick Laine and Jack Hazelman for him. You you don't trade those guys afterwards because you look like a clown when you do that. Eisman will look like a clown for trading Sergeyev after that. Yeah, yeah. But then again, then you don't make the deal. So I, I, I agree with that. You hold out until the off season and you go to another team. You get more teams involved and drive the price up. Yeah, because a sense uh, the trade deadline is usually seventeen teams involved. You can get whatever all of them. Well, I say 17 is the one that playoff position and usually one or two that's out of playoff position. So, um, that's usually this, just how that works. But, um, yeah, you're right about that. They weren't getting Braden Point. There was no chance. No. No. Was not. There was no chance on him or Sergeyev. And you know what? I, I don't I don't know what attracted them to Brett Howden the way that they were attracted to him. But... I can tell you right now, I mean, he wasn't even like a big time scorer in the WHL. He had some nice seasons there, but he wasn't a top scorer there. He Did they think he had leadership skills? Oh, sometimes, you, sometimes you just miss. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just miss. I mean, look at, look at yeah. um, the, <laughs> the trade that the, um, when the Alps got Ryan Smith, the Oilers. Got three guys that turned out to be nothing. I mean, Ryan O'Mara, did he even play a game in the NHL? I, uh, I, not that I know of. I, 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 I don't think he did. Robert Nilsson, like we went over and we talked about it, was prepared to read the three they drafted. Oh, Hugh Essendon, yeah, because Jessamine played one game. Nilsson yeah. played, what, 30, 33, 31, so they missed there. And so, so sometimes in these trades, you, you, you scout people and you just get it, you know, you just get it wrong. And the Rangers. The Rangers got it wrong with, with Hayek and, and Howden. It happens. I mean, 
like I, I mentioned to John on Twitter, they didn't even get foot. They didn't manage to get foot in the radish. It was they they went the you know they went the wrong way there. But you know, I think so. Like I said, this is the nature of our game. Sometimes sometimes you get fleeced. Sometimes you you know you win a trade. Sometimes it's fair for both teams. You know, in this case, the Rangers the Rangers lost this one. Fuck you for mentioning that name, by the way. What name? You know, Hugh Jasmine. Oh, you just... <laughs> yeah. No, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's just, it's it's always going to bite us because we're going to wonder what could have been. Because anybody, anybody drafted after him had a better career. So, all right. But this is actually going to close out our, my Philkin opinion. So, what are your thoughts about what the Rangers got back in that trade? And what about even just what fans' reactions to trades are? Because naturally, we're always going to overreact right away. After all, just look at the Eric Carlson trade from uh, two years ago where uh, San Jose fleeced Ottawa. So uh, I don't think we, I don't think they were saying that when they got Tim Stutzla. So, um, oh, wait. Oh, before, I, by the way, put your reactions in the comments below. Leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, we got to see this comment first. Ah. <laughs> I, I still want to take that that video of Mr. Perfect Kurt Hedding and Bobby the Brain Heenan walking down the aisle and Hedding does the towel flip to Heenan and just have friggin' Howden's face on Mr. Perfect. We'll call him Mr. Cardio. And then Quinn's face on Bobby the Brain Heenan because you know that's what that relationship was like. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.